So why are we doing this again? Because Mercedes didn't listen still. We protested the C63 having a plug-in hybrid three years ago. I know. And now it's actually happened. Yeah. Did we really, did we have to, you know, go the extra mile? Yes, because they didn't listen. This is gonna work. I'm taking a break. I kinda like it. White pants were the wrong choice there. Yes, plugs are for butts. Currently, the knee-jerk reaction by everyone is they ruined it, blah. So we decided to do the opposite of a knee-jerk reaction, which is a slow leg movement. Anyway, I'm gonna do a bit of a road trip with this car to try and understand it. I'm starting here in the north of Italy at the Italian lakes, and I'm gonna drive this thing all the way to the south of France where I'm going to meet James to test a certain Aston Martin. And then I'm going to drive all the way back into Italy to test a certain Ferrari. It's going to be miserable, but we do it for you. I felt that I used my week before James arrived in Europe wisely. I spent some quality time moseying around Northern Italy and experienced not only the sights and sounds, but also the culture. I even had some time for some quiet reflection. I don't like sand. It's coarse, rough, irritating, and it gets everywhere. But I put my disdain for sand aside, and I ventured south towards the French Riviera to meet James. And I started to get the hang of the C63, even if I didn't fully understand it yet. Because if you missed the memo, the new C63, a vehicle that has had a V8 under the hood for well over a decade, now has a four-cylinder hybrid. Yes, we hear your boos, because we added that sound effect in post. But I say to you, it is at least a rather potent one. With the help of its hybrid system, it puts out a whopping 671 horsepower and 752 pound-feet of torque, making it the most powerful production four-cylinder in the world. The sexiness of those numbers is more than a little threatened by this compact sedan's 4,600 plus pound curb weight, about the same as a V8 F-150 Super Crew, or in car terms, it's within a hundred pounds of a new full-size S-Class. But Mercedes claims a 3.3 second 0-60 time, which is not too shabby. And not too shabby is the least we should expect for the almost six-figure estimated price the AMG C63 e-performance commands. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe, hit the bell. As I sped down the Italian autostrada and the miles whisked by, I developed a few issues with the C63. But because of the fact that the highway speeds in Italy seemed to be about a million, before I had a chance to draw any final conclusions, I found myself in Monaco, where I met up with James. After a day or so with another AMG-engined car, we hopped in the C63 and headed back into the heart of continental Europe. Over the next few days, we each spent time in the driver's seat in every different type of driving that Italy, Switzerland, and France had to offer. Highway poles, traffic jams, tight roads, endless tunnels, famous doorways, you name it. And eventually, we decided to find a bit of a back road to push the C63 even more and more importantly, to find out if everyone's opinion that it's been ruined is correct. Okay, a back road and a chance to experience 
the AMG C63 SE 4Matic Plus all-wheel drive. Did I get everything? Is that yeah, the, the thing is that okay. when you say AMG, it does... We've, we've had a lot of time on the highway in this car. Yeah. And it pulls. I oh, mean, it's quick. Yeah, I mean, 671 horsepower is Real nothing, quick. nothing to sniff at. If I fling this over into race mode, it uses... Oh, I got a corner here, and that's happened already. Yeah, this is where it actually excels. Yeah, flat, smooth roads. Foot down. Oh, my God. Oh. That's quick. That is very quick. Absolutely RS5 M3 quick. Oh, no question. All right, watch, actually. If I pull over and I do a launch, I can click this boost button here. Got the boost. Race start. Oh, oh my God. It, quick. it is properly quick off yeah, the line. Yeah, quick. Seriously. So that's in race mode, right? So there's the different modes. There's yes, that's in race mode. There's sport plus mode. And all of these modes, as you'd expect, use the battery differently. Right, they, they give you a certain amount of it. Yes. And it increases, obviously, as you get towards race mode. Right. And they stiffen the dampers. And Yes, and the steering and all of that stuff. But then if you are in any mode and you push your foot down all the way and click the pedal, it gives you full boost. Yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of lag there. So much turbo lag, yeah. The transmission is good when you're flat out, and it makes like a whoop boom on the upshift, which I do like. And I, I, I have to be honest. Okay, so the, the big, <laughs> the small <laughs> elephant in the room is the four-cylinder. Oh. And as a four-cylinder, yes, it sounds pretty good. Uh, sure. The, well, they've the, done the, lots of stuff to make it sound good, right? right? But no one asked for a four. No, cylinder. they did not. And they, and I, I know it's electrified and hybridized and all the stuff. And I know that it's inspired by and born from F1 technology. It's trickle down from yes. their F1 program. Yes, it has. But no one asked for that. And if, <laughs> you know, of all the things you can get from F1. Take away my cylinders isn't one of them. It's like yes. saying this is from the space program, but then giving you some, uh, fro you know, dried, freeze-dried ice cream. Or yeah, or like a tube of broccoli. Or it's, exactly. It's not the <laughs> it's not the bit from the F1 program that anyone was like, yeah, stick that in yeah. the C63. Yeah, this isn't the cool tiles on the outside of the space shuttle for heat dissipation. No, this is not that. This is no. the bit that we didn't want. And there are those that would say that this has ruined the C63, and you can consider. Potentially, we are in that we might, camp. We might be some of them. This is not what a C63 should no, be. It's not. And it didn't take long for us to figure this out, did it? No. Um, well, I mean, it certainly helped it, that you arrived, hopped in the car, and I looked at you and said, this is not the C63 we were looking for. Wait, and we wanted, we wanted to, to have this sort of redemption story for this car. We yes. wanted to be like, everyone's wrong. Because in previously, we've experienced how good a hybridized engine can be. Admittedly, it was a V6 in the 296 Ferrari, yes. but that was incredible. It barked, it was fast, the car stayed pretty light. But this thing weighs as much as three mammoths. It's, and, and honestly, the thing is that's interesting, and I feel like a lot of people won't agree with me, the four cylinder and the sound and the feeling of acceleration when you are flat out in race mode, I don't actually mind it's not it's not it doesn't end this this car for me what ends this car for me is well it's twofold one it's the chassis yeah get to that in a second and two it's just how friggin complicated every part of this car is this is not new stuff in here we've reviewed this before but it's it's so discombobulated and you add the extra layer of EV and in livability, it's horrible. Yeah, it's, it doesn't have any of the benefits that we're used to from an electric motor. Yeah. It, the, the, you know, the, it provides instant torque as you put your foot on the gas, but it doesn't do it for long. It kind of does a, a, a jump, yep. as, as, almost as if you're in like an Accord hybrid, because even though it is a 200 horsepower electric motor, it's pushing 4,700 pounds. So it's not much. And then there's a gap. Big gap. Big old gap. Even in even in race mode. Yep. And then there's turbo lag, and then it kicks in. Yes. None of it is inspiring. None, None. of is it, it is it is satisfying. None. I mean, you know, you compare that to the twin turbo 
of the W205 generation, or the previous generation, or the naturally aspirated V8 oh. from the generation before that. The W204? Which, which was just a, a hooligan. I loved that car. Th this has just become so clinical and... And complicated. Yes. And, and I, you know, they obviously did everything they could to try and make it exciting. Like They literally have recorded a version of the engine and then piped it through speakers and synthesized it. And there's speakers on the outside of the car to try and make it exciting. But all of that just sounds like the, the German engineers have tried to engineer fun instead of just let the car be fun by making it an exciting design. Well, no, engineer, engineer German fun is a thing at the moment. <laughs> yes, Audi are doing drift mode. So yes. it, it can work. It again, can work. Yeah. Drift mode is a fun technology. Right. Taking away cylinders and making it a four cylinder is not. And the, and the other problem you mentioned was the chassis. Because, we, yeah, we, no, sit, hold on, before we even get to it, I, I, I want to reiterate, we've just complained a lot about the engine. Yes. The problem is, is that I could live with it if, if the chassis was good, but it isn't. It's so, so all over the place, to a degree I don't think I've ever seen. In comfort mode, there isn't enough rebound damping, so the car jiggles and shakes and goes well, all over the place, and the sway bars are obviously so stiff to try and deal with the mass in the corners. Unless the road is perfectly smooth, like this corner right here, great little corner, the car's all over the place. And somehow, stiff. Very stiff, very rough. And we, you know, <laughs> this, this particular trip, this road trip, we've done long days. And, and at the end of a long day, getting into this, going over any road that's not this smooth, is just it gives you a headache. It's it's just rough, and we've, a, and we've checked tire pressures. We it's have. Not, it's not the tire pressure. There's just this huge amount. We've we've seen this in cars that are overly heavy before. There's this huge amount of bass that gets pumped into your brain, yeah. which is good at least because the stereo has none. <laughs> well, it has a four cylinder sound coming through. The. The car is deeply flawed. Deeply. And, and it's, it's one of those things, and the reason you're hearing us vent is because it's flawed in a way that it wasn't trying to chase great, it wasn't something that could have been great and doesn't quite hit it. It just, it's just not good. Like, the, the, on paper, the things they've done to it, it's just stopped it being a car that enthusiasts want. And it's, it's massively propelled the new M3 competition to the top Easily. Of, of the exciting, of the, you know, of the three cars. And, and the Audi RS5 is a much better cruiser. This doesn't do anything better. Maybe the, the steering's actually pretty good. The oh, yeah. yeah. To be fair to the car, there are some good points about it. Yeah. It is very powerful. It is very fuel efficient. It is very fuel yes. efficient. Well, funnily you say that because we've actually, we've had such a great time with this car. And that's all because of the eco display. Oh, my little eco ball. There's an eco ball that flies forward and aft as you <laughs> apply throttle and it, and it goes dark red and gets very upset. It gets very upset if you're not driving economically. But it, it, it has become a little mini game. <laughs> oh, and, he's so angry right now. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> and then I braked and he's like, happy, regeneration. <laughs> yeah, and weirdly that's become the most- It's the most fun part of the car. Yeah, that's how, we've enjoyed the C63's eco display more than anything else. <laughs> so when it's not punishing you with suspension that's too stiff because of the mass, which is why we went on our entire journey to enlightenment. Yes. <laughs> and when it's not sounding like a C300, it has fun screens. It, I don't like them. No. No. Anyway, um, what was the thing, James, we said we were gonna not do when we turned the camera on? It was don't rant. And what did we just do for- It's hard not to. It's I, hard I, not I just, to rant. I know how good a C63 can be. Yes. It's a legendary car. It's the C63. Anyway, um, it looks good. It looks great. Why don't we talk about that? Okay. After our rant, uh, uh, driving impressions were over, we stopped back at our Airbnb in the heart of northern Italian wine country to discuss. It's good at hustling. It's good on those corners. It is, yes. yes. Despite its weight. And it gets you to places like this, I guess. This is beautiful. Oh yeah, Italy. Italian wine country. That's a, uh, you can hear, that's probably a uh, Lamborghini tractor. Oh yeah. It's the right colors. 
We saw a few of those on the way. That's cool. Are they expensive? Is that like a Lamborghini pricing tractor? I mean, I think all farm equipment is expensive, so it just right. defaults to the yes, that is the answer. Speaking of farm equipment, this makes a bit, <laughs> it's not this makes, a, makes a bit of a tractor sound. It does actually make a bit of a tractor sound. Okay, that, look, that was a bit of a rant, and I think the problem is, is this doesn't do any of the things on the list very well. The electric side of it, not that good. No, and, it, well, and the, even though the, the EV has a two-speed gearbox, yeah, right. I think that's an extra speed we just don't need because there's just no. so many gear changes. There's, there's lots of this, and there's not. Yeah. It doesn't fill in the gaps. The rear wheel steer is 2.5 degrees, so it's barely there. I didn't even notice that it existed. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it could turn on a dime like the uh, EQS. That's not a bad thing though, because the EQS was just all over the map with how the rear wheel it was, steer was. It was, but it can so. be. All right, fine. The S class. I think that the base like number is 4.5 degrees. So let's just settle for that, just as a middle. Sure. And then, you know, all wheel drive, it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't the C63's MO, it's just, it's just a no. bit strange. No, I know. However, as we said, it really still looks the part. They've made a few subtle changes. Yep. First of all, we've got a reverse facing um, hood scoop. Hood ev evacuation duct. Yes, which sure. I think adds a little bit of flair. Yeah. Um, they've reversed the AMG grille. It is now sad face instead of happy face. Oh, right. It goes... Mmm. Yes. But the whole thing kind of looks... It looks a bit melty. But overall... They've I all melted. I all still really like the look of it, though. I think it's like the design department's way. Instead of leaving a review on Glassdoor. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's their, like, cry for help. But we've got these... This, these uh, Air vents on the side, which they're a bit plastic yeah, here. That could have been a bit fancier in terms uh, of yeah. Just I mean, they 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 filled the entire interior with piano black. So why not put it there? Because I'm not going to touch that no. and leave fingerprints. Listen, the the thing is about this is that BMW has. I'm trying to think of something that's not going to get me in more trouble. Well, if that's a sad face, they've had what's relations the with the K9. <laughs> yeah, if if that's, uh, <laughs> if, that's a, if that's a sad face, then the M3 design department's going. <gasps> <laughs> so, <Hold me. laughs> look, this is fancy. We normally drive these sort of cars around Toronto or yes. LA where they kind of blend in. Yes. But we've been driving this around like provincial Italy. Is that a thing? Provincial Italy? Yes. Small towns. Small towns. And people and look at you. They look at you. Yeah. They, you know, sometimes well, you... Also because like when you open the door at night, there's a giant Mercedes logo on the front. And then the headlights, when you turn the car on, they like go... <laughs> and they open right the whole yeah, this car thing, just This thing dissolves. shoots light onto the floor to tell you there's a while you're driving to tell you there's like a a road works yeah, thing or ahead or, and and well yeah the, the whole car I, this is this is the way i described the experience of driving and living with this car so i've lived with this for two weeks yeah right yeah. it gatekeeps the way that you should operate a vehicle so like to the point where if you're not doing it exactly their german specified way you get beeped at yelled at shouted at like it there is so there is an insane amount of technology in this car and like obviously the interior, that's not new to this particular car. No. But as I said, you combine that with all the EV stuff and all of the latest version of everything. And it's like trying to operate the Enterprise. It's outrageous. You need a team of people. It's nice. Can you explain this, Thomas? Oh, um, that's for a different video. That's for a different video. That's coming. You'll yeah. See. Okay. No, I, listen, I really like the way this looks. I really like how rapid it is. Yeah. I don't even, I don't even mind the four cylinder noise. I really don't. I think that if this idea had been executed a little bit better, I'm not sure that I have nearly as much of a problem with it. If they'd found a way to save weight, a lot of weight, a lot of like a lot, a, a, lot, lot, a lot, lot, a lot of weight, yeah. then I don't think it would have been that bad. Well, maybe our opinion will change. Let's let's drive it to Germany. Okay, sure. Let's return it to them, the happy people. No, yep. the sad people. They're, sa they're sad they're people. They're now sad. Yeah. And maybe we'll cheer them up to have it returned. Okay. So, in driving almost 2,000 kilometers through Europe, we successfully overcame the knee-jerk reaction and had some well-informed final thoughts. And by the time we got to Germany, our opinion remained unchanged. Somehow, the best way to enjoy the new C63 is to ignore the harsh ride, compromised trunk space and lack of engine theater, and to try to keep the eco ball happy on the dashboard. That is, to really lean into the fact that it's a hybrid. Enjoy the amount of performance you get for how much fuel you burn. For a car with almost 700 horsepower and the weight of an elephant, we averaged just under 10 liters per 100 kilometers. 
not half bad. That, and we did have fun trying to decide on our favorite shape of a boob. So perhaps the adolescent tomfoolery that has always been the C63's namesake is still there, but now it comes from the lumbar menu instead of the throttle pedal. That makes the new C63 a slightly awkward proposition. If Mercedes were targeting a new type of buyer with these changes, then we've yet to meet one of them. The good news is, the interior and exterior hasn't changed that much since the previous generation, and that W205 has all the V8 goodness that many think, including us, a C63 deserves. Thanks for watching.